Hello Argyle, top of the morning to you. I'm headed over to the rummage sale at the church. That was a whole bunch of uh, accents, all in one. Wish me luck. Well, hey there folks, and welcome back to the utter depths and despair of all of YouTube's. I am here on my way on this rainy day. You know who doesn't care about the rain? Rummage sales inside of churches or thrift stores inside of buildings. So that's where we're headed today. And stick around to the end of the video where I'm gonna go over actual number, net profits, gross profits, taxes, what I put aside for taxes, and I'm also gonna break it down into an hourly salary. As I was getting my morning coffee, that's how I found out about this rummage sale. It was a shocker to me. I went over to the church where it is. It's 9.09, I am nine minutes late. I need to get inside. First thing I see are these free boxes of hangers. Who needs this many hangers? People with big closets. I see a bunch of people here. This was unexpected. I didn't expect so many people, especially when they know I'm here to buy everything. They shouldn't really be here. It's all for me. When I'm looking at the media, I'm pulling out stuff, uh, looking for brand new things that are sealed in the box in obscure titles. That's what I do whenever I find these racks. So I'm searching here. I did find a cool DVD. Um, it sells for 30 bucks. I paid a dollar for this. So I'll end up making a good uh, $18, $19 on that. And then I found this three pack, uh, again, selling this on Amazon sells for about $28. I paid two bucks for this one. So I'll make about $15. Today, this is my first official rummage sale of the year. Believe it or not, I have been working on Saturdays uh, and Sundays. My work week for my other career uh, is Monday, Tuesdays off when all the good garage sales and rummage sales seems to be happening on the weekend. So I haven't been able to make a single one until now. And it's already May. I feel like the year is over. Let's get to it. I love the word rummage. It sounds like it's from, from like old, old English back from Britain, back in the, the 1400s. Like I'm, I'm off to a rummage sale. Hello, Argyle, I'm off to the rummage sale, LA. Well, hello, Argyle. Well, hello, top of the morning, Argyle. It's probably like more Irish than English. Down at the church. I'm skimming through these books. It's fiction, a lot of modern fiction. Not really anything for me. I'm looking for maybe some Harry Potter books to complete a set, but nothing much. I did find this Field Guide to the Birds, 1947 edition. There's a little bit of shelfware, but when I was looking at comps on eBay, uh, this book was in better condition than a lot that have sold and it only sells for about 15, 16, $17. But I only paid a dollar for this. Chris Page's Strong Binding has a great picture. So I had to pick that up. Pick this book up because it looked interesting, it looked like an educational textbook, but uh, the book actually wasn't worth anything. But inside, I found these postcards. Uh, Keith Heron, I think, is the, the artist's name, and he's pretty popular. These are vintage postcards that aren't used from the 90s. Uh, I looked these up and found, uh, or sorry, Keith Herring is the, is the gentleman's name. And I think I get like 35 or 40 bucks for all these postcards. So that was a fun little find. I found this poopy head game. Never saw this out in the wilds. It's only worth $12 brand new on Amazon. So no, if you see that in the wilds, don't pick it up. It ain't worth shit. Then I find this cashmere bouquet. These are vintage soaps. And why people buy these things, you might wonder why would somebody pay 30 to 35 bucks for these vintage soaps. But as we all do, we all like the products that we use and these are long discontinued. So people are still looking for them online and they pay a premium for stuff that they really like. I found this, uh, it is a partially used perfume bottle of Amazing Grace made by Philosophy and it sells for like 30 to $40 brand new. However, this one is used. Uh, if you go to sell this on eBay, it won't give you the option to sell this as used in the perfume category. You actually have to go to the collectible perfume section to list this stuff. So keep that in mind. Even uh, keep an eye out for for perfume bottles as as they do have value even used if they're popular. Found this vintage Grand Canyon T-shirt. Found this exact one. So it recently sold on eBay for almost 17 bucks. I only paid a dollar for this vintage single stitch shirt. Cool find out in the wilds of this rummage sale. Look through these coffee cups. I'm pretty much looking just for like Starbucks mugs or um, some other things that might catch my eye with cool artwork or maybe some old Fire King type glasses. There wasn't anything interesting in this. If you see something that I missed, let me know. Uh, all these people were obviously touching all the stuff that I 
was going to buy. But uh, I find this old grill. For some reason, I thought I I, I sold this in the past, micro grill. But uh, it's asking four dollars for this thing, and it's only selling for about twenty with shipping. And it's very heavy. Left that behind. But I did find this vintage unopened glass carafe Black and Decker. Uh, only two bucks for this, and I was shocked. This sells for thirty-five to forty dollars on eBay. So I picked that up. Pampered Chef, obviously a great brand. Anytime you see Pampered Chef, look it up. Uh, four dollars for this used piece of stone. I saw how used it was, and actually just thought there's no way somebody would be interested in a used piece of stone. But I looked it up, and I was actually surprised. I learned this: people are still paying twenty to thirty-five dollars with shipping for used pizza stones. So I picked that up for four bucks. Then I find this Sony CD player, and some of these have real value. I wasn't sure, but I definitely wanted to check out this like handheld boombox type thing. And it was asking $8. They say it works. I'm taking their word for it. I mean, we are in a church. We all know what happens if you lie inside of a church. So I took their word for it. It sells for about $45 um, with shipping. Then I found this little bucket to truly go through these, these rummaging uh, get my hands dirty. Doesn't sell for much. I think brand new, I can get about $10. And it was only a quarter for this vintage Panasonic uh, camera strap. Then I find this cool 80s retro style uh, Micronta. I'm not sure how to say that uh, digital clock. But it sells for prices were all over the place. $15, $20, somewhere less than $10. I didn't know what to do. I was confused. It was like I was just born into the world yesterday. I left it behind. They were asking $4 for it. And uh, I, I didn't pick it up just because I wasn't certain on the price, but it still looked pretty cool. But look at all this stuff. It's beautiful. I don't want any of this. It's not, it's just, it reminded me of how magical reselling is and how lucky I am to be here and find junk that people don't want and turn it into money in my pocket. Then I find this, uh, this Excalibur handheld game. Handheld games are always, no matter the brand, look them up. You'd be shocked. This one didn't have a lot of value. It's kind of all over the place. $8 with, with shipping, $20 with shipping. Again, it's another thing I left behind. Found all these bags of toys. Bags of toys I love finding because usually there's some hidden gems within. However, all of these bags, even though they were only a quarter or 50 cents a piece, these are all like Burger King and McDonald's toys. And, and I just left all of them behind. Even if I bought all of them, uh, it's a possibility to lot them all up for some decent money, but uh, I didn't want to deal with all that, so I left them behind. I did find this jacket, Stern's Drywear, has this cool uh, camo, real camo look. Paid $2 for it, makes this cool sound. And we're off, and let's go over some of the numbers for the day. I invested $20 at this rummage sale. Gross sales are going to be about $301. The selling and shipping fees, that's $116. I collect that into that gross sales number as well, but it, it about a break even for those shipping fees. And then shipping materials are going to be about $3. And that's just a, the, just an estimate that could be that could be high if anything, but not by much. That's going to leave us with a net profit of about one hundred and sixty two dollars. Now, I do take out 15 percent of those net profits and put it aside uh, to pay for 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 taxes for the following year. I'm not a tax pro, I'm really not a pro at anything that I do. But 15 percent seems to be the magic number that uh, um, works out for me every year. So I put that that aside. And then let's get on to an hourly wage. So travel took about 10 minutes round trip. This is very close to where I'm staying. Thrift time, I was in there for about 45 minutes. List pack and ship this stuff all in is gonna be about 60 minutes. Hourly wage, that's gonna be at $162 that we made from that net profit for two hours. That works out for $81 an hour or $138 after tax, after two hours. That works out for about that $69 an hour magical wage. So thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you guys out in the wilds.